If your child has ADHD and you've never looked into B vitamins, you could be missing a critical piece of the puzzle. And if you have tried them, but didn't know about the genetic glitch that affects how they're processed, you might've made things worse without even realizing it. Welcome to the Soaring Child podcast, where parents of children with ADHD learn tips and tricks to help their child soar at home, at school, and in life. We feature interviews with experts, medical professionals, and parents just like you, who are learning how to reduce ADHD symptoms using food and other natural strategies. Because children with ADHD deserve to soar just like every other child. I'm Dana Kay, your host. Hello parents and welcome back to another edition of the Soaring at Child podcast. I am your host, Anna Kay, and today we're diving into one of the most overlooked but incredibly important nutrient groups for kids with ADHD, B vitamins. Now, before we get into the details, let me share a story I've heard countless times. Maybe, maybe it might even sound a bit like yours. Now, a mum came to me recently and she was feeling stuck and frustrated. She had already made huge changes on her own. She'd cleaned up the diet. She'd removed gluten and dairy. She did add some other supplements, but her child was still struggling with emotional outbursts, poor sleep, constant brain fog, and she'd even done some genetic testing. And she mentioned that her child had the MTHFR mutation, and she said, Done. I don't get it. We're doing everything right. Why isn't it working? And that's when I asked her, do you know what form of B vitamins your child is taking? And she kind of paused and she looked confused and said, you know, just a regular B complex from the store. And that right there is the piece that so many parents miss because B vitamins aren't just about boosting energy or immunity. They're essential for brain development detoxification, mood regulation, sleep and focus. And when your child has certain genetic variations, they may need very specific forms of these vitamins to actually use them effectively. So in this episode, we're going to break down exactly what every parent needs to know about B vitamins, how they connect to your child's you know, unique genetics and how to make sure the supplements you're using are doing what you think they're doing. So let's walk through a few of the most important B vitamins and how they impact our kiddos with ADHD. And we're starting with one of the most overlooked ones and that's B6, okay? This one's critical for kids with ADHD. And when B6 is too low, you might see uh, symptoms like constant fatigue, irritability or mood swings, poor sleep, uh, hormonal imbalances, behavioral changes. Why? Because B6 is a key player in building neurotransmitters uh, like serotonin, uh, GABA. You know, these are the calming brain chemicals that help with mood regulation, sleep, and emotional control. And when supported correctly, B6 can boost dopamine and serotonin. It can improve alertness, memory, reduce anxiety, depressive symptoms, and it can even help regulate emotions in kids with ADHD. The best part is that you don't have to go straight to supplements. As I always say, food first if possible. B6 is naturally found in things like chickpeas and tuna and salmon, beef liver. I know beef liver, but hang tight. We're going to give you a little trick on that one later. Uh, Poultry, potatoes, bananas, and peanuts. Now, B6 is just one piece of the puzzle. Another key B vitamin, especially when it comes to focus and mood and brain development, is folate or vitamin B9. Now, folate plays a major role in methylation. I'm going to talk about what that means, but, uh, you know, it creates those neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, which, again, help regulate attention and emotional control and even motivation. And low folate can show up as poor focus or memory, irritability or mood swings, fatigue, uh, poor growth and development delays. And just like with B6, you can support folate naturally with food, which I love food first. You know, leafy greens like spinach and romaine, uh, avocados, asparagus, lentils and beans, and even beets. But here's the catch. The form of folate 
really matters. And many kids with ADHD, and especially those with the MTHFR gene mutation, they can't effectively convert synthetic folic acid, which is often found in standard multivitamins and fortified foods, into the active form the body actually uses. And if you have a known mutation, it is really important to avoid this form, which is folic acid, as it may lead to a buildup of unmetabolized folic acid and potentially cause negative health effects. Now, usually the better form for those with this mutation is the active form called methylfolate. Some of you may have heard of this uh, and a lot of practitioners and influencers out, out there, they actually push it. Uh, they sort of say, you must have methylfolate if you have an MTHFR mutation. For some, yes, this is true. But for others, not so much. Now, if your child also has a mutation in another gene called SHMT1, which is less talked about, the body may actually struggle to convert folate into the forms needed for brain and body function, even if they're taking methylfolate. That's where folinic acid can be a better option. So folinic acid actually skips over the blocked step that's caused by that SHMT1 mutation, making it easier for your child's body to use folate for things like mood and focus and behavior. Sorry about that, I knocked something over. Now, too much methylfolate can overstimulate sensitive kids, especially if their body struggles to clear out excess methyl groups. I know a lot of these words are, you know, really complicated sounding, um, but hopefully I'm doing an okay job in breaking it down. Now, in these cases, folinic acid tends to be gentler and more supportive. So before we go any further, I want to zoom out and look at a bit of a bigger picture around these vitamins. Um, you know, there's a bigger system that these vitamins are working within, and that's called methylation. If you've never heard about it, don't worry. Most people haven't. It's one of the most misunderstood, but super important biological processes in the body. Now I could show you a biochemical chart right now to explain it, but I'm not going to because it would probably make your eyes glaze over, but I'm going to simplify it. So methylation is like your body's traffic director. Okay. It sends little chemical tags called methyl groups to all the places in your child's body and yours where they're needed. And trust me, they're needed everywhere. These methyl groups help with detoxing heavy metals like lead and mercury, it helps creating neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, melatonin, which you need for sleep. Uh, it helps with regulating mood, memory, and sleep. It supports gene expression. It converts serotonin into melatonin, that sleep hormone. It repairs blood vessels. It builds long-term memory. Now, in fact, around 60 to 90% of our DNA needs to be methylated to function correctly. Just let that sink in. If methylation isn't working, nothing works properly. Okay, so let's talk about genetics because here's what most people get wrong. They hear about one gene, MTHFR, and they think that's the whole story. But methylation is a cycle, not a one gene show. Yes, MDHFR is really important, but it's just one player in the symphony. You know, we, we also need to look at genes like MTR, MTRR, SHMT1, which I talked about earlier, FOOT2. And this one is uh, very important because it actually affects how your child absorbs B12. But here's something that shocks a lot of parents. Your child's blood work might show normal B12 levels, but if their FOOT2 gene isn't working properly, they still may not be absorbing or using that B12. For some children, genetic differences like variations uh, in the FOOT2 or the MTHFR gene it might affect how their body uses that B12 or that folate. So while blood tests can show nutrient levels, genetic testing in consultation with a health practitioner, obviously, may offer additional insights for really targeted, you know, personalized care. However, not every child needs this level of testing. It's most helpful when standard approaches aren't working. So when B12 is low or, or even functionally low, uh, your child might struggle with 
low energy, mood swings, memory issues, or behavioral instability. Now imagine if you knew this ahead of time. Imagine if you're, you could support your child's brain based on their unique genetic map. It's a total game changer, right? You know, now we, we've covered three of the most Im impactful B vitamins. We've looked at B6, folate, which is B9, and B12. These are the ones most involved in methylation and neurotransmitter production, mood regulation, which is why they are getting spotlighted today in this podcast episode. But yes, there are other B vitamins out there like B1, B2, B3, B5, biotin, and they still matter as well. They help with energy and metabolism and nervous system health. So while we're keeping the focus on the heavy hitters today, just remember the full B family plays a supportive role in overall brain and body health. Now, many children, especially those with the you know methylation gene variants, like the ones I talked about, need B vitamins in their active methylated form. So that means methylfolate instead of folic acid and methylcobalamin instead of the cheaper synthetic B12, which is called cyanocobalamin. Okay, but this is important. It's really important to know, as, I, as I've talked about a little bit earlier, not all kids thrive on these methylated forms. Some actually feel worse. They actually get more hyper more anxious or more, you know, emotional. It's not your imagination and it's not bad parenting. You know, if, if their body can't process the extra methylation boost, it can actually backfire. And that's when we look at the genes like SHMT1 or MTR, because this becomes a game changer. Now, you know, I remember one mum I worked with whose, whose son became super agitated after starting a high dose methyl B12 supplement. And she was doing everything right as well, but he was bouncing off the walls and having daily meltdowns. And we ran a genetic test and sure enough, he had an MTR variant. Once we swapped out methyl B12 for adenosilcobalamin, everything calmed down within days. His focus improved, his mood evened out. It was like, you know, flipping this switch. And it's the same with the SHMT1 gene. If that one isn't working well, their body might not convert folate properly. Even if they're taking the right kind, that's when folinic acid may be a better option. Not folic acid, folinic acid. It's like giving their system a shortcut around the roadblock. Now think of it like trying to unlock a door with the wrong key, okay? Methyl B12 or, or methylfolate might be really powerful keys, but if they don't fit your child's lock, then they're just not gonna work. So if your child ever reacted badly to methylated B vitamins, it doesn't mean those nutrients are bad, it just means your child's body might need a different path to get the same result. So working with a practitioner to you know trial those supplements uh, cautiously and monitor the responses is obviously key. Now, whenever possible, we always recommend getting B vitamins from food first, you know, things like eggs, uh, leafy greens, chickpeas, salmon avocado, and beef liver. And as I said earlier, you know, I know that's not everyone's favorite. You know, let's be real. If your child has gut issues or gene genetic variances that block absorption, food alone might not cut it, okay? And that's where gentle food-based supplements can come in. So food-based supplements like those derived from organ meats. It can be a really easier, practical way to increase B vitamin intake for kids who struggle with whole food sources. Also look uh, for third-party tested brands or consult a healthcare provider to find the right fit for your child. One of my personal favorite uh, is Paleo Valley's grass-fed organ meat complex. It's packed with B vitamins straight from nutrient-rich organ meats uh, without the taste and struggle of actually eating that beef liver, which I know most kids will not eat. Uh, I think this is one of the cleanest food base uh, supplements out there and a great option if your child needs a little boost. Now the supplement, it can cover the recommended daily uh, intake for B12, B2 and folate for most children and adults and it's not synthetic. It's made from real food, which is why we love it so much. 
But I will say for some children, especially those with deeper methylation issues or more complex genetic needs, food-based supplements might not be enough on their own. And that's when a high quality B complex supplement uh, can really, really help if it's the right kind for your child. Now we typically recommend one of two options depending on your child's needs. One is a methylated B complex, which includes active forms like methylfolate and methylcobalamin. And it can be supportive for kids who tolerate methyl donors well and need that boost for their mood focus or their detox. Or another option is a methyl-free B complex, which includes folinic acid and adenosylcobalamin instead of the methylated forms. And this one is ideal for those kids who are sensitive to methylated supplements or have mutations like the SHMT1 or MTR. Both are available in high quality professional grade formulations and have helped many families we support. We link uh, to both of those in the show notes. Our favorites are Liposomal B Supreme and B Complex Methyl Free because they're clean, they're effective, they are pr practitioner grade. Okay, so let's just finish up uh, with some practical steps. We want to add, add B rich foods into your child's weekly meals. If using supplements, you want to choose the right forms, but go slow. Watch how your child responds. Get curious about your child's genetics, especially MTHFR, FOOT2, SHMT1, uh, and more, the ones that I mentioned in today's episode. We're always happy to talk about this more with you, so definitely reach out uh, to me through my social media channels uh, or book a call with my team, and I'd be happy to chat. You could use food-based supplements like Paleo Valley when needed. Uh, you can work with someone who understands the whole picture of methylation, not just one gene or symptom because your child's brain, it's complex. Uh, but when we support the body holistically, big things begin to change. Now, if this episode gave you clarity or confidence, please share it with another parent who needs this message. And if you've got a minute, just leave a quick review. It really helps more families find su the support that they need. And finally, make sure you check out our show notes for our supplement series cheat sheets and links to other episodes in this series. But last but not least, please hear this. I'm super proud of you guys. You're doing the hard work, you're learning, you're showing up and you're fighting for your child's health. And that really, really matters. Listeners, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Soaring Child Podcast. I'm Dana Kay, your ADHD health practitioner. Keep on thriving. Thank you for listening to the Soaring Child Podcast today. To learn more about how to help your child with ADHD, soar using natural strategies, visit our website at adhdthriveinstitute.com and follow us on social media at ADHD Thrive Institute.